me it doesn't show uh, up right now but that's not a problem no important information you miss now in order to answer oh and it's not moving hmm. in order to answer the question i was asking as a title of my presentation um, i will try to have a look together with you starting from 1878 in the direction of 1914 and towards the end of uh, my talk we shall turn around and have a, a short look in the other direction as far back as 1870 in order to uh, to check whether there is a, a kind of a red line in german attitudes towards uh, the archaeology of cyprus or whether there are important changes uh, we should notice um, of course, there is, in general terms, uh, a German interest to Cyprus prior to 1878, and I'm doing just a little bit of name dropping uh, right here. Um, now you should basically see uh, the <laughs> a bust of Ludwig Ross on the left side and uh, a photograph of Karl Friedrichs on the right side, which are not showing, at least not on my screen. Uh, both were in Cyprus in 1845 and 69, and both uh, um, brought back uh, to Germany uh, Cypriot antiquities. Um, and although at least Friedrichs was traveling in official mission as a director of the uh, Antiken Sammlung, uh, the Antiquarium in, uh, at the Royal Berlin Museums. I wouldn't consider these activities as official uh, German missions to Cyprus. As a matter of fact, for the following, I'm going to consider um, only activities that required a permit, a license, a firman by the official authorities, and that included some fieldwork, uh, name, namely excavating as official German uh, projects. The situation changed, and I'm trying to swift to my uh, maybe to my to my PDF because uh, half of my uh, items here in in the PowerPoint are are not showing. I try to do this very quickly. Uh, the PDF should work, uh, but it doesn't have the um, the uh, the animation, which uh, we can live with, I guess. So. Uh, here you have Ludwig Gross and Karl Friedrichs, and here on the left you have uh, Max Onefal Schrichter, who went to Cyprus in 1878, and on several publications, uh, like the one on the right, which is uh, the very short uh, curriculum vitae he attached to his uh, doctoral dissertation, the Antiken Kultusstätten of Kypros, published in 1891, he insists that uh, he came to Cyprus, and I quote, when the British occupied Cyprus in 1871, I went to this island with a recommendation from the German Imperial Chancellery as a correspondent for newspapers. Now, one may ask, and rightfully so, uh, why does... Why? Screen again, please. Oh, sorry, my screen. Yeah. Hmm. Now it's probably this one here. Hope you can see it. Uh, now one can rightfully ask, why does a correspondent for newspapers needs uh, official recommendation by uh, the uh, chancellery of the German Empire? And on one specific occasion, Onefal Schrichter gets a little bit more detailed. Um, this is a letter um, of him. He wrote to the chief secretary of the British administration in Cyprus, the notorious Colonel Falkland Warren, on October 2, 1881. Um, it's four pages long with all kinds of matters. And on page two, um, he says the letter is in German, by uh, the way. And the translation is uh, by me, so I am to blame from, uh, for the German, for the English translation. When I came to the island with a recommendation from Count Bismarck, the chancellor, it was thought that with the time I might become useful for ancient sciences and especially for the German Empire. And he continues writing in October 81. Therefore, I wrote to our German archaeological institutes, to German ambassadors and note, and to our museum in spring of this year. Uh, Dr. Konze, director of the collection of sculptures, wrote immediately back to Odin Richter that he and the other directors of museums, as well as Privy Councillor Curtius, would be really happy if to be obtained by the British government to carry out excavations in Cyprus for the German Empire and more specifically, and as proposed by myself, in Salamis. I shall turn in and so on and so on. When I showed this letter, the answer by Konze to Commissioner Kopham, that's Claude Kopham, Commissioner in Larnaca, he assured me that this is out of question. Hence, I abstain from further activities in Germany. 
in a letter um, to uh, Falkland Warren. So if this is true, and unfortunately we have to rely on Onifal Schichter's sayings, um, his recommendation by the Chancellery in Berlin would include him um, looking for possible archaeological activities. Um, there is a, a second spot where Onifal Schrichter kind of confirms what we've just read in, in the letter to Falkman Warren uh, from his opus Magnus, Kypros, the Bible and Homer. Um, here in the English version, so I'm not to blame for the English uh, here, um, in the, the, the part that is uh, encircled in red, in 1880-81, before Pergamon was begun, it was intended in Germany to excavate Salamis and the rest is more or less the same that we've just seen in the letter, Kopham, who uh, kind of cuts off this kind of uh, German activities. So no official German activity uh, by then. And of course, all the other activities, or a lot of the other activities that Onefal Schrichter did carry out in Cyprus cannot be considered official German enterprises, like, for instance, the excavation of a sanctuary of a female deity near uh, the Yalias River in Dali, which was done on behalf of uh, Charles Watkins. And despite the fact that almost 100% of the finds ended up in Berlin and uh, a little bit was, uh, um, was transferred later on to Karlsruhe, this was not an uh, official German enterprise. Uh, neither was his excavation in uh, Polis Tisrisorhu, we are going to hear about uh, later on, and many others more. Uh, that general situation changes only in 1888-89. I wrote 88-89, the activity itself takes place in 89, but the bargaining and uh, 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 the dealing with uh, starts a little earlier. Um, I'm showing you from the Gradico uh, Archivo uh, in uh, Nicosia a letter written by Richard Schöne, Director General of the Royal Berlin Museums, to the Chief Secretary of the British Administration, again, Colonel Warren. It's from February 7, 89. And it says, Sir, I have the honor to acknowledge, etc., etc. Uh, um, uh, uh, a permit, uh, His Excellency the, Excellency, the High Commissioner of Cyprus, on behalf of the Berlin Royal Museums to excavate for antiquities at Dali, etc., etc. Now, this granting of an official permit to excavate at the site of ancient Italian did not uh, did provoke quite some reaction uh, back in 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 uh, Great Britain and on the meeting of the Society for the Promotion of Hellenic Studies of February 25 so about two weeks after the letter by Richard Schöne, uh, uh, Mr. Hoboth, who I'm supposed to be Sir Henry Hoyle Hoboth, took the opportunity of protesting against the permission to excavate ad Italium having been granted to the Germans by the High Commissioner of Cyprus. The chairman of uh, the society then uh, says that the committee of the Cyprus Exploration Fund would at once inquire into the matter, which is quite interesting if we see uh, the following now. Um, a little bit before the meeting of February 25 in London, already some, uh, some uh, uh, events started uh, to happen in Cyprus. Uh, the British administration tried to, uh, to cut away at least a part of the permit given to the Germans for Idalion. And uh, just as, as one element, I'm showing you a letter of Samuel Brown, who writes here as agent of the Berlin Royal Museums to the chief secretary. He forwards uh, letters and wants uh, answers to what is going on. And uh, on, on the second part of the paper here, continuing on the back, uh, starts the comments of uh, Falkland Warren, um, who tries, uh, as I just said, to, to omit a part of ancient Idalium from the German excavations. Onifal Schrichter get aware of this as well and started uh, wheeling and dealing on his turn. He writes uh, here to uh, the High Commissioner, Sir Henry Bulwer, uh, already on February the 12th, um, insisting that he is the discoverer of this, uh, the place, as he uh, calls it, of the specific spot, and that this discovery goes long back as, uh, as far as 87, which, by the way, is true. He does his usual name dropping, all the people he contacted upon the discovery of this spot, and quite important for us, and suggested that excavation should be carried on there. And he suggests that to everybody, say in Oxford, Berger in Paris, Oetting in Strasbourg, Furtwängler in Konz in Berlin, Derpfeld in others and uh, others more. Uh, quite interestingly, um, he wrote uh, once again to his size, and then to Mr. Ernest Gardiner, I proposed this spot 
with a very uh, a, a, a very um, interesting parenthesis, of course, without giving too much information in order not to be forestalled, as I was in Leon Dali, we know, at uh, PAFO, and now again at Poly. But my proposals to begin work at Dali towards Gardner were without success. And if we remember that it was the same Gardner who presented results of uh, Cypriot uh, studies at the meeting of the uh, of the Society of Hellenic Studies, um, um, it, it must have been quite an awkward uh, situation when uh, uh, Hoyle Howard was protesting against the permit given to the Germans, knowing that he himself apparently has been proposed to excavate that uh, spot. And there is no good reason to doubt Ohne Falschrichter's sayings, because indeed, uh, uh, along his career, he always proposed everything to everybody. He really doesn't matter for and with whom he worked, uh, as long as they paid for it and they hired him as director of the excavation. Uh, he continues here, I wrote once again in late 88, not only to Berlin, but also to England, British Museum, uh, Society of Hellenic Studies, Cyprus Exploration Fund, and I recommended in London and Berlin joint operations, which would have, which would have been quite a, a, a revolutionary uh, event uh, back in the late 19th century, but this didn't happen, and the Berlin Museum applied sooner in order not to lose again Dali as they. Here it was I, here it is, they had lost Leon Dari, we know, Parfo, and now Poly. So clearly, there was a, a, an official German interest in archaeological activities in Cyprus in these years, 88, 89. Um, uh, at the end, uh, permission to excavate the specific spot in Dali was not given. Um, not rightfully so. There is a, a, a legal mistake by the British administration, which I'm not going to insist uh, right now. And uh, in a letter written to Solomon Renak by March 23, Ole Falschichte even prays to God, God grant that we shall obtain the spot after all, which, uh, uh, as I just said, at the end did not happen. Just for the record, the spot uh, that is uh, here in question is the eastern Acropolis of uh, ancient Italian, uh, where at the end Ole Falschichte was able to officially excavate a few years later. But for 89, the permit initially asked for, for ancient Italian was turned in a way I can't uh, uh, really describe right now to a permit to excavate in Tamasos. And it is uh, during this excavation that within others, Onifal Schrichter on behalf of the Berlin Royal Museums uh, did discover the so-called uh, royal tombs or tombs of the kings in um, Tamasos. Um, we skip forward to 1893-94, um, where in uh, uh, spring 93, Onifal Schrichter obtained a substantial amount of money by the Emperor uh, William II, uh, more specifically 25,000 mark, um, which is, uh, uh, has an equivalent here of 5,000 US dollar. Um, by the back then must have been a, a quite substantial sum. It's difficult to calculate how much it would be nowadays. Um, I tried once and um, came out with a, a number a little bit more than half a million of uh, Euro. So yes, you can carry out one or two excavations with that money. Although uh, the money, uh, most of the money was supposed to, um, to enable Ohne Richter and collaborators to write his famous open Opus uh, Maximus Tamasos and Italian, which, as we well know, never saw the light of the day. But it enabled him also to come back to Cyprus and to carry out official excavations on behalf of the Prussian, it's not the German actually, it's the Prussian government in uh, 1894. Um, the same dealing with the specific spot on the eastern Acropolis of Italian started. The British administration again tried to uh, hinder him to excavate there, which at the end he was uh, able to, um, to, to circumcise. So he was able to excavate on, on the Acropolis, eastern Acropolis of Italian, as well as on quite some other spots. There's a lot of documents relate, relative to this event kept in, in the uh, former German state uh, archives. And uh, one interesting uh, part here is that apparently what comes out from all these documents the um, the official handling of the affair was not done anymore directly 
for as it was in 89 by the Berlin Museums and the British administration in Cyprus, it now went a level higher. Uh, it was handled between the foreign ministry in London, um, the colonial uh, ministry in London is involved as well, went from there to the German embassy, so the Ministry of External Affairs uh, um, of the German Empire, and was sent back from there uh, to uh, Berlin. Why exactly uh, this uh, shift of negotiation level happened, um, um, I do not know for sure. Well, at the end, a lot of uh, archaeological activity took place in and around Italia, and I show you one of the receipts uh, for uh, paying the government overseer um, in, in April, end of April 1894, um, on the bottom right. Uh, there is a lot of reports uh, Adolf Furtwängler sent back to Berlin because um, Adolf Furtwängler was supposed to nanny to a certain extent in order to assure the uh, good uh, uh, the good carrying out of the archaeological activities. So on the left, uh, Adolf Furtwängler writes back, reports back to the Ministry of Education and Cultural Affairs in Berlin on the foregoing of the excavation and on the right, um, one, one uh, page of several pages of lists of workmen and quite a certain number of women um, receiving their payment week by week which is an interesting document. Um, you have all the names of the people working there. You have uh, their places of uh, origin or where they live. So it's a lot of people from Dali, but not only. Alhambra and Aya Vavara to, uh, to, um, to, to, to figure there as well. The results are more or less well known. Uh, I'll show you a, a plan of Onefad Schichter's trenches uh, on the Eastern Acropolis, Furtwängler, Magda ohne Falschrichter on a donkey or a mule and Max ohne Falschrichter and their workmen on the eastern Acropolis of Italian and finds from the necropolis of Italian. So officially we have substantial excavations in several necropolis and the sanctuary of Aphrodite at Dali for the Prussian government. And I put this into parentheses and probably in Tamasos as well. We know of course that they were excavating in Tamasos as well. But um, I do not know whether there was an official permit by uh, the British administration uh, issued for Tamasos and for whom, um, supposedly for the Prussian government as well, but this is not completely clear, at least not to me. In between uh, 1894 and 1910, uh, Onefalsch Richter tried uh, to obtain other permits, which at the end, um, were not successful, his uh, trials. Um, just for the record, I'm showing you here one. It's a document, uh, uh, several documents, which uh, attest uh, of a request by Onefalsch Richter for the Royal Museum uh, in Berlin in order to obtain a map uh, of Italian surroundings and probably asking for further field activities. All this did not happen. However, in 1910, um, uh, the next, and as far as I know, last official German activity in Cyprus before uh, the outbreak of World War I uh, um, did occur. Um, it is an activity launched uh, um, uh, again by Onefalsch Richter, but carried out at the end without his participation. Um, the activity required the, um, the, the birth of a committee of a Cypriot commission of the Royal Academy of Sciences in uh, early 1910, which hadn't existed so far. And uh, this paper here is uh, um, the guidelines, the instructions for the director of the expedition for exploration of the ancient sanctuary at Rantidi, issued by the Cypriot Commission of the Royal Academy of Sciences in Berlin. And here, um, uh, Robert Zahn, uh, assistant uh, or keeper, keeper by then, keeper at the uh, Royal Berlin Museum, is uh, uh, is charged with the directorship of this expedition and he can, if he uh, considers this a good idea, hire Onefalsch Richter, who is already by then in Cyprus. As we know, this didn't happen. Um, in the uh, central archives of the Berlin Museum, there are quite some documents uh, relating to these activities. Here, the acting uh, um, chief secretary of the British administration my screen is too small, I can almost not see it, uh, informs Zahn that he's going to uh, get his uh, license to uh, excavate in Rantidi, and at the same time, uh, a previous uh, uh, authorization given to Max Onefalsch Richter to take photographs at the spot of Rantidi is withdrawn, and indeed so. A copy of uh, a letter 
acting chief secretary to Onefald Schrichter, where, um, where he is informed, Onefald Schrichter, that this permission is now absolutely withdrawn. Uh, apparently, the British did learn a little bit with uh, dealing with Onefald Schrichter. If you tell him your permission is withdrawn, he probably wouldn't consider this. But if you tell him it's absolutely withdraw, maybe he takes into consideration. And just for the fun, the Germans are also uh, getting a, a, saw, a staff sergeant's tent, uh, which they have to pay for a rent and the transport to Rantidi. The official permit is in the Berlin documents as well, typewritten with a beautiful seal of the chief secretary to government, uh, Cyprus. And uh, it confirms what we've seen so far, Dr. Robert Zahn on behalf of the Cyprus committee of the Royal Academy of Sciences in Berlin is granted a permit to excavate in uh, Rantidi. We had a discussion uh, yesterday. Um, he is obliged, according to this license, to turn in preliminary reports to the British administration, but not a word about official uh, publications. And indeed, Zahn never published a line um, about uh, this activity. Um, the name of the, uh, of the government overseen, uh, overseer is given to is uh, uh, Mr. Jérôme Constantinid Peristianis, uh, who is an official of the Cyprus uh, government. And indeed, this excavation did produce quite some results, despite the, the missing publication. Um, we have the, the picture on the right, who shows us the three Zaptie uh, protecting the excavation activities and the uh, three members or uh, well, members and, uh, and visitors of the excavation. There are um, the three gentlemen have their name written on the backside of the photograph, Robert Zahn, uh, on a stepped presentation, uh, the government overseer, uh, Jerome Peristianis, and Cleantis Pieridis, who uh, was um, a dealer within others with antiquities in, um, in, in, uh, in uh, Limassol, uh, sorry, and who, who kind of tried to, uh, to design himself as the discoverer of the sanctuary. And uh, I hope you admire the appropriate dressing of uh, the gentleman in the back um, for visiting an excavation. So to sum up, preliminary sum up, we do have three official activities, German activities in Cyprus uh, in 89, uh, 94 and 19. 10. Uh, interestingly, and officially, uh, all of them were carried out by or on behalf of different official German uh, um, institutions. Here is the Royal Berlin Museum, then the government of Prussia, not to be confused by uh, the government of Germany, although I think uh, this was current uh, uh, currency, and uh, finally, the Royal Academy of Sciences in Berlin. In order to give a, a preliminary answer to the question, yes, I think there was a certain official German interest in the archaeology of Cyprus. And from this very shortly, um, I would like to, uh, to follow on three questions. Is this a lot or not? I mean, three is a lot compared to one, but it is not a lot compared to like 15. Um, are we able to uh, figure out possible reasons for a, a, a limited German interest? And again, what happened um, officially before 1878? Well, a lot or not. Um, I may be wrong, and I'm looking forward to your comments to um, what I'm going to say. I have the impression that the three ger official German activities are more or less the only uh, official uh, archaeological activities in Cyprus carried out by other than British and or Cypriot official institutions, Cyprus Museum, British Museum, Cypriot Exploration Found uh, and others until the beginning of the Swedish Cyprus expedition in 1927. There is uh, a question mark or there are several question marks for at least three French enterprises, which I very uh, uh, summarily put on the slide here. All of these activities did actually happen, but it is completely unclear whether they involved real field work and whether they asked for and or obtained an uh, official permit. For instance, uh, the Gastillon Saint Victor, which was French consul in Larnaca, definitely did excavate in Cyprus uh, some beautiful. Um, 
tombs or other tombs with some beautiful items in Kuyon, but uh, it doesn't seem that this activity was done on behalf of an official French uh, institution, although he was uh, a little bit uh, distance directed by uh, Perrault in uh, Paris. So question mark, question mark, and even if we have to account one or, or more of these activities, they seem definitely smaller than the, um, the German activities. Um, specific reasons for this besides the pure uh, scientific approach and which might eventually um, explain the shift from the level of, uh, let's say, subaltern uh, structures, museums versus Cypriot uh, government to the higher level of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, may be related to the personal relationships between uh, the, uh, the crown of the British Empire and the, the German Empire in the person of Victoria of Great Britain and Ireland here, um, who, was who was a daughter of uh, Queen Victoria um, and uh, the mother of Emperor William. Um, uh, the, personal, uh, the personal relationship between the two empires was rather good, despite the rather hazardous political uh, uh, adventures of uh, Emperor William. And not just with the British Empire, uh, this gentleman here is the actual crown prince to uh, the Greek throne, uh, Constantinos, who wedded uh, another uh, child of uh, Victoria uh, here, just for the record. Now, um, official German interest, and this is my last point, prior to 1878. Here enters the scene, this rather short person on the slides. It's a Paul Schröder, uh, trained as an Orientalist, specialist in Phoenician language, uh, who visited Cyprus extensively in 1870 and 78. He is here seen on an official ceremony in uh, Baalbek with uh, a lot of uh, Ottoman and other authorities in 1905. So um, quite some years elder than he was when he traveled uh, around Cyprus on horseback um, some 35 years earlier. Uh, Paul Schröder owed his leave from his official duties as a drugman at the German embassy in Constantinople and at least some of the money uh, in order to carry out his trip in 1817 to Justus Olshausen here on the right, who was a very important privy councillor at the Ministry of Education and Cultural Affairs of Prussia. Um, so it is just normal that Schröder reports back to him actually from his trip in Cyprus. This letter was written on March 28, 1870 at Larnaca. It's a lengthy letter of 10 pages and contains a catalog of inscriptions, which was the main interest and Schroeder, but the part we are interested in here on page number eight, where he says that he himself did not find any antiquities because he had no time and money and no official firman, which is needed for uh, such activities. Uh, he says what the peasants occasionally find is quickly bought by Chesnola and Lang. I focused, he continues, to identify uh, spots for future excavations. And I uh, found out that the earth of Cyprus still contains rich archeological treasures. It would be recommendable, in my opinion, Schroeder, if the Berlin Museum could start excavations here on his own account under the directorship of an archeologist. And he continues proposal, proposing that the said archeologist should obtain on the same time the consulship in Cyprus, so in short, he proposes the Chesnola or the Lang uh, system for uh, future uh, German activities. Um, and he ends up uh, all the, uh, the other states, with the exception of North Germany, have their own uh, representatives in Cyprus. Maybe you, uh, esteemed Privy Councillor, could use your influence to pass on these my thoughts to uh, His Excellency the Councillor. Now here he refers to the Councillor of the North German Federation. There was no such thing as a German empire until 1871. And here we do have a kind of a continuity because in 1870, 
the councillor of the North German Confederation was no other than Count Bismarck, who, as you can see here, was for uh, like 30 years, 20 years uh, prime minister of Prussia and a councillor, chancellor of all the successive uh, states that formed at the end the German Empire. So he was the leading political man when Schröder wrote in 1870, and he was the leading political man in Germany when Onifalsch Richter here lying on one top of one of the royal tombs of Paphos, near Paphos, uh, was working in Cyprus. That's my last slide, my second last slide, don't worry. So we can add um, it, as early as 1870, first in question mark, I don't know whether these are really the first, they are the first one I've found so far, IDs for IDs only for official German excavations in Cyprus and the three real German excavations in Cyprus I've just pointed out to you. Uh, it is a lot, yes, compared to other activities, but again, it is not a lot uh, if you think what uh, the German uh, government, museums and institutions could have uh, done. And when looking for reasons, um, I, I come up with uh, some elements. One reason may be Max Onifalsch Richter himself. As we well know, he was not an easy character. And I can, uh, I can believe that uh, a lot of people who would have been able and willing to work in Cyprus did abstain from doing so um, because of Onifalsch Richter always being around there. On the other hand, Onifalsch Richter, I think he himself, maybe without noticing, gave another reason. Uh, this is again from uh, um, Cyprus, the Bible and Homer, the page we've already seen. And you remember, he starts uh, saying that in 1880, 81, before Pergamon was begun, it was intended and so on and so on. Well, despite the fact that the chronology is not completely correct here, but I think he has an important point. On the left, I put together some, I'm sure it's not all um, uh, German, official German excavations in the Eastern Mediterranean of these years. And uh, these are only the ones that can be considered classical archeological excavation more or less. We should add uh, the, the Near Eastern excavation in uh, on Nemrut Dark, uh, Mesopotamia and so on and so far. So uh, definitely a lot of German, of official German money was sucked up by uh, these, uh, uh, these activities. And it clearly is so that Cyprus came in direct concurrency with these activities. For instance, in 80, uh, 1893, when Onifal Schrichter applies to the emperor for money, um, the ministry asked a lot of institutions for, uh, for reports what they think about these activities in Cyprus. And uh, um, Theodor Mommsen destroyed Onifal Schrichter's plan for Cyprus, uh, not only because uh, of, of scientific concerns, but clearly uh, because of uh, he being him being a strong supporter of Karl Humann, who on the very same year, 93, was asking for money to excavate in Sinjirli in Asia Minor. So at the end, I think um, German activities in Cyprus didn't go beyond uh, the three uh, uh, elements I was showing you, uh, because they were dwarfed by the beautiful columns, architectural features, and sculptures of Pergamon and other places. And of course, after uh, the outbreak of World War I, there was uh, uh, no word anymore of German activities in Cyprus. I thank you very much for your um, listening and looking. Thank you. Thank you very much.